So I wanted to show you a couple videos just so it, I, think, I think it's easy to, to, to say that things are, um, you know, you, you can achieve these transformations. I think it's pretty simple to just, to just say that, but to actually see it happen and to see it happen to people that are near you it makes it a lot more real. It makes it more feasible. It makes it more realistic for yourself. To say, oh my gosh, that person that just did that, that person was that person? Oh my gosh, like this is, that is, I am capable of doing it. And so that, that's the whole goal here is that I want you guys to recognize that, you know, if, if we do the things that someone like Peyton or Ashlyn or, or Maria has done over the last year or, or what Jeff has done over the last three years or what, you know, Jason did when he was in school, whoever it might be, all of a sudden, Ashley's throwing 48 feet and she's going to D2 Nationals and she could be an All-American. All of a sudden, Allison goes from this unknown athlete and she's throwing close to 40 feet and being a, a, a complete beast. All of a sudden, Leanne, you're throwing 35, 40 feet, going, you know, going into high school and just crushing everything. And Sarah, you know, especially this morning, you look really, really good, where you could become that next Germantown Academy elite thrower, where you take over after, I forget her name, after she leaves and now all of a sudden everybody's like, well, who's going to be next? Well, it's going to be you, right? And same thing with you, Brant, where what we were talking about yesterday <clears throat> is that Lucas is, is was, he's our glider. Lucas is a glider who threw 46 feet in high school, 46 feet. He throws just shy of 65 feet now. Okay, he was a, a Division I All-American. He didn't get recruited by anybody. He was begging to get into colleges. He, you know, he had really good grades, so he got into Bucknell, Lehigh, all these really small schools. Begging people to let him throw. And he, broke, he, he set the conference record, he broke the school record, and now he's training to go to U.S. Nationals. He's one of the best throwers in the U.S. He's probably the best glider in the U.S. or the second best glider in the U.S. right now. So all these things are feasible. You already threw further than, than, than Lucas did in high school. And talking, talking to him yesterday, I think you, maybe you know, he sort of clued you in where it was like, hey, dude, you've got the size, you've got the ability, you have all the tools that you need, you have all the intangibles, but the one big thing, Lucas trained six days a week. Threw for five days a week, lifted for, for six days a week, or trained six days a week. And he did it over and over and over and over for six, uh, you know, six years now, seven years. And that's the whole thing is that that's where you can start here, but you start here and it's just a process. It's a big process to get there. And Connor, even thinking about you, especially with your size, you're like this untapped talent. You have tons and tons of potential and you really just started spinning, you know, this week. But you have good strength. Your shoulder strength overhead isn't that good, but that's another thing too is it's, Within a month, you could sit here and, and all of a sudden you see, you, you see a whole bunch of different results just because you're learning how to move your body a little bit better. You're really, really young and you're really, really big. And now all of a sudden you get some strength to match your size. And six months from now, you could be a completely different kid. Okay, so I just wanted, I wanted to go, this is, this is a video of Haley. Oh man, there we go. First, because I, I wanted to use some of the weightlifters that you've seen. So. This is a video of Haley, and you guys have seen her lift, right? And this is, you know, that's, so that's 2012. This is at the old gym. She just started, she was in eighth grade, and this is, you know, 85 pounds. So almost what you were snatching today, Allison. She's going into eighth grade there, and that's, that's what she was doing. And then all of a sudden, within six years, she's clean and jerking close to 220 pounds. And this lift put her on the senior world, the senior Pan Am team, as a junior weightlifter. So she made, she made this lift at the Arnold Classic. Yeah, I was pretty excited. But that's, that's six years, okay? That's what six years looks like. Six years from her being 13 to her being 19. That's what happens right there. But it, it's, it's gotta be you know, over and over and over again. And so if we can share, this is, So let's watch that again. Let's go, let's go in slow motion. So you can see Keely up top here. This is like the first or second day she had ever been here, right? She's, she doesn't even have shoes on. She's got sneakers. She's throwing in sneakers. And if you would have told Keely, so this is right after 10th grade, I believe, right? Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. So this is two years ago. She had thrown like 36 feet once from a, you know, 
having no idea what she was doing. This is this year at New Balance Nationals where she got second place. So in two years, she went from 36 to 48-2, right? Yeah. Two years. That's it. That's not a long time. But she, what did she do? She showed up five to six days a week, every single week, coming in to train, every, all the time. So if we go back, try and watch the first one if you can. She's coming off her toe, her shoulders are a little open, or she's barely getting across the circle, shot falls out of her neck, pulls away there. Now watch that bottom one, she comes off her heel, right side's fast, opens that left side, she could have kept it right down a little bit longer. Gets out over the toe board and hits with a nice strong finish. Okay, so let's watch that one more time. Is that Sean Brennan? I think that is Sean Brennan in the back. And that's a good transformation. This kid right here, two years ago, was at this exact same camp that you guys are attending. He, he was, yeah, he's sewing like 14 meters. He's from the, the Naval Academy. And you, if you don't believe me, look him up, Sean Brennan. Right here, two years ago in your seat, what did he do? He grinded for two straight years. He added almost 10 meters to his hammer throw. He's throwing like 63 and a half meters. And then, yeah, and, then, and at this point, he was throwing just shy of 50 feet. And then now, this year, he just graduated from the Naval Academy, and he's throwing 18 meters. Okay, so that's just, just around 60 feet. And nobody in here is going to have more responsibility than a kid that's at the Naval Academy, okay? That's a kid who's got to go to class all day. He's got to do his drills all day. And I don't mean drills like throwing drills. I mean he has to go do military drills all day. So if you want to have somebody who can make as many excuses as he can, it's right here. But he didn't make any excuses. He did work for just two years. Two years. That's it. That's nothing. You guys can sit here and say, Brent, you can say, you know what, for the next eight months, I'm going to go ham for eight months and just see what happens. Let's just do eight months. It's not even, that's not even close to two years, right? Brent, and it, you want his conference at all three events? Yeah. That's, so that's crazy. It's funny that we didn't even, I didn't even notice that he was in that video. So here's our boy, Hefe. Gosh, what were you doing? Jeff, one thing I want to point out, I think your right heel is better in that top video. Okay, no, no. <laughs> I <laughs> okay so if, if, we, if we look at this, okay, so let's watch this again. Watch that top video. <laughs> Try and watch the top video, okay, then it collapses. Now let's watch that bottom video. Okay, so this is Jeff probably throwing 35 feet, maybe, maybe 35 feet, probably, 30. yeah, probably 30, <laughs> probably what you're throwing right now, Connor, right here, okay, so now three years later, yeah, again, okay, so Connor, you're, you, this is you, three years of showing up and being annoying for three years, for, well, since this, since this throw, no, that's three years ago, you're in 11th grade currently, like, leaving 11th grade. So in three years, he's going from barely throwing 30 feet to now he's throwing 58.7. But Jeff shows up every Sunday through Friday, and he's always here. He's always ready to train. He's always ready to annoy Trevor or I, no matter what's going on, and mostly Trevor, but even me too. And he's always grinding. Even today, you know, everybody's finished up. He's still in here cleaning. He's still getting work done, and that's the whole thing. Is it's, it's not... There's no secret. There's no secret. But the secret is you have to do work and you have to do it consistently and you have to hold yourself accountable and you have to sit there and say, man, I'm extremely sore. Right now, all of you guys are extremely sore. You know the feeling. So what you could do is you can go home and you can say, you know what? I was really sore this past week. If I can train through this, if I can get another good week in, I can get through that period of being sore because the first two weeks is the hardest point. Now we get through those first two weeks you're not nearly as sore. There's, you know, you're fatigued. And then all of a sudden, now you start to actually like when you feel sore. You start to like when you feel a little bit of, of fatigue or your arms are pumped or whatever it might be. 
And now you start to embrace that feeling of what work is, and then, the, and then all of a sudden you start to see that result. You know, three, four weeks in, now you're throwing two or three feet further, and you're like, wow, this is actually paying off. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to show, I want to show that one later. Here's Peyton. So this is Peyton's first day. And this is what I, I want to point this out because this reminds me. This reminds me of Leanne, Sarah, and Allison the first day that we started spinning. I'd say to and even Connor to an extent, you out, out of the back. You guys are almost identical to this. The first day, the, like day one when we started on Monday, right? This is almost exactly how you look, where you sort of over rotate, almost look like you're going to fall over, and then three years later, it's this. You set the state record, okay? And that's and, and here's the thing. This is what we talked about the other day, you know, talking about Jeff, and we can always sit there and make the excuse, like, oh, they're a physical freak. They're physical freaks. She's not a physical freak. Jeff's not a physical freak. They're talented. You guys are all talented. You're not freaks of nature. You're not, you know, Shaquille O'Neal or, or LeBron or any of these guys that are freaks on all different levels. You, you guys are you know, as good as Peyton is. You're as good as Jeff is, but the difference is the freak side comes from the mental aspect of driving you know, an hour and a half to come train consistently three days a week here, holding herself accountable so that when she's at home, putting in another two to three days at home. No, it was like. Seven, well, seven months into. Like, second yeah, everything. everything all the time. And, but she pushed through it, and, she, and that's the other thing too. That that's a good point because everybody sits here and will say like, it's so hard for me. And dude, I do the same stuff all the time. Where I'll be like, dude, I, nothing's working. Nothing is working. Like I'm banging my head against the wall and nothing's going. But that's the point where I just gotta go. I just gotta keep doing this. I just gotta keep going. I gotta keep waking up. I gotta keep doing my work. I gotta make sure I get to school, make sure I do my homework, make sure I go in and get my lift in and I get my throws in. And then all of a sudden, six months later, of you just doing your work over and over and over and over and over again, you get out of that rut. Maybe it's not even, it's, for you guys, it'll be a week, you know, two weeks, and all of a sudden you'll start to feel better again. But it, it's, it's recognizing that this is not super easy. But there's no secret. It's easy. It's the, from the top, it's, it's easy to just do it, to just go, 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 and not make excuses. This one's Ashlyn, right? Yeah. I think that's all. So this is Ashlyn. So Ashlyn down here, this is Ashlyn down here. This is, so she's just finished off, up her 10th grade year. She's a little bit more muscular now, and she's got a lot more pop. Um, Up here, yeah. So she spun for for a while. She glide. She ended up gliding, and now she's back to the spin. Watch where her left foot is. Left foot here, left foot here, right. So she's getting a little bit deeper, and then she's just smashing that finish. She still picks up her right leg, but again, and this is the other thing. He's like. She's not perfect right now. She's not anywhere close to perfect. Connor, this is what you were doing on the finish with that right leg. She's not close to perfect, but she's going to keep training. She's going to keep coming in. She's going to keep holding herself accountable. And a year from today, we're probably going to be having the same discussion with this video and then her throwing probably close to 50 feet. And that's how it's going to pan out because that's the whole thing is it's like holding yourself accountable is the hardest thing to do is every single day waking up and saying, when you're tired and you're fatigued and you don't want to do something, you're sore, you're busy, your life's busy, you've got a lot of stuff going on. But guess what? You're 16, 17 years old. You really don't have that much stuff going on. And at the end of the day, you could go outside your driveway. I have a guy, Malik Stewart, who throws in his driveway because he works 60 hours a week as an engineer, but he wants to try and make it to Worlds, and he throws for the Bahamas, and he wakes up every morning, and he's throwing out of his driveway. He's not making an excuse. He maybe only has 30 minutes to lift. 
he's still getting in 30 minutes. Maybe he only has 20 minutes to lift, but he can go in and he can do his power snatches and some benches and he can still get a good workout in. And he's not... Yeah. Like when you can be creative and like you go outside, like you don't have the flashy equipment, you don't have the flashy facilities, but you're still going out and getting work in in your backyard or sidewalk. Or, right. You know, you're the only one out there training and you're. You and know, you're training, and then you start to feel like I'm an animal, I'm like Rocky. It's like, the, like the, you know, um, it's so raw. It's just like a raw feeling of, of uh, knowing that you're. Yeah, you're getting a step ahead of where everybody else is. And that's the thing, too, is it's like maybe you only have 25 minutes to throw. Well, guess what? Take three shots outside, throw them, walk out real fast and come back and say, all right, let's see how many throws I can get done in 25 minutes. And sometimes those are the best sessions because you're, you're turning off your brain and you're just moving. So I, I wanted to use this. I wish it showed up a little better. Okay, so this is Monday, right? Monday, today. Let's play that again. right here. Which one's better? That's, that's three days, four days. That's it, right there. So you see it with Allison. Today, she looks like this. She couldn't even back squat this weight yesterday. And now she's snatching it a day later, 24 hours later. Snatching it, and not only, not only is she snatching it, but her movement is really, really good. And if we go back to her movement, you know, watch, watch that, that video on the left. Watch that video on the left right here. Her, her movement was terrible, right? But that's, all, that's what happens in four days. Right here, look. Well, that's, yeah, that's not saying much, Trevor. <laughs> But that's, that's, I wanted to share that with Allison because that is what happens in four days of one, us hounding her. And, and I saw the first day, to be completely fair, that I, th I thought Allison could be really good as a, with a snatch and with a clean. As soon as I saw her lifting, I'm like, she could be a weightlifter. So I knew that this could be cool, but you know, I, I know I set it up, but I also wanted to be clear that that was four days. That was just four days of us saying, look, Hold yourself accountable. Allison, you got to come in and snatch. And she didn't complain. You know, deep down inside, she's like, oh, my gosh, my shoulders are sore. My legs are killing me. I, I just want to go to bed and take a nap and, and, and lay in the air conditioning. But she didn't. She held herself accountable. She took cues. She was very, very coachable. And that went from that to this in, what, six sessions, seven sessions? That's nothing. And that was probably 20 minutes a day. That was or 20 minutes each session. But that's, that just shows you that progress that can be made in that short of a period. Now you take that and you expand that over. Now we go to, you know, where, where would this be in a month? Where would this be in three months? And now all of a sudden, this could be legitimately, you know, she's got the big yellows on that she's snatching. And now she gets into the circle and she's got serious pop when she's getting into the circle. Okay, so the whole goal was that you guys sit there and we, we know the formula. You know the formula. You got to throw, you got to lift, you got to learn your technique, you got to make sure that you're watching technical videos, you got to make sure that you're eating well and taking care of yourself, you're staying positive, and you're waking up every morning with a purpose. Every morning you have a purpose for school, you have a purpose for training, you have a purpose for your family life, and then you execute it every single day over and over and over again. And in six years, if you could come to me in six years and say, Dane, I did all this stuff for the last six years and I didn't get any better. I'll give you a million bucks, the million bucks I don't have, but I'll give you a million dollars because you're going you're gonna to sit there and in six years it'll be a completely different conversation. Then you're going to be talking to me about how you want to train to go to the 2024 Olympics. That's what's going to end up, or the 2028 Olympics. That's, that's what will end up happening. Okay, so hold yourselves accountable. Know, know your purpose every single morning, every single night before you go to bed. Plan your day and recognize that you guys are all capable of doing really, really cool stuff, but you've just got to hold yourself accountable. Okay, so is there any questions, Connor? So you're all going to go home and train five to six days a week. Ashley, throw 50 feet next year. Shock the D2 world and be an All-American. Because that's the thing, too. You do have that capability. 
Like you move so well through the circle, you gain a little bit of strength, a little bit more pop with your legs, and now all of a sudden, everybody knows what's going on at Winston-Salem State, right? Okay. Brand, you have any questions? Oh uh, yeah, like what if like we can't throw one day like during the week? Is it okay to like throw twice in one day? Or? Yeah. So I would say. I'd still challenge you that you could still throw every day. <laughs> but let's just say that you can't, you can't do it, right? It's just you, need, you do need time to recover or rest or whatever. If, if, you said, if you said, like, hey, Saturday I know I could wake up and I could get a session in Saturday at 10 and another session in at 4 or 5 o'clock and make up for two days I missed or one day that you missed, absolutely. I think that, and that's, that's just a step to holding yourself accountable. And, and honestly, I think what ends up happening is that when you do train so consistently, you start to feel guilty. And not that you want to feel guilty, but you do. Like, it's like this sick relationship where it's not really healthy to feel guilty about missing a training session. But if, you're, if your goal is something regarding athletics, then you, you should really feel guilty. You should sit there and be like, yo, I'm shortchanging myself. myself. I need to make sure that I get this work in so that it, it is good to make up for that time. Because that's the other thing is like, and, and this is what I was trying to tell you guys on Tuesday, is that it's not just about the sport. Now all of a sudden you start taking this to everything else in your life. Now all of a sudden you're putting out more effort in school. And then when you get a job, you put out the same effort and you become that dream employee. Or if you own a business, now you know how to handle stress. And at the end of the day, the, the athletes, the people, the human beings that can handle stress the best, are the ones that are going to be the happiest and they're the ones that are going to be the most successful. If you can't handle stress, then you're never, the, your whole life you're going to feel sorry for yourself, you're going to make excuses, and you're not going to accomplish the things that you've set out to accomplish. Okay? That, does that answer your question? Yeah. Jeff? Ashley? Allison, anybody? Sarah? Yeah, and you ready to go th throw? You're going to go home in five days a week. Getting throws in. Worried about, <laughs> worried about the, keeping that heel up in the middle. Okay, so that's the other thing, too, is you guys all have, you know, at, at, when, you, when you are done, so we, we'll go throw now. And I think you guys are leaving early, right? Is that right? Okay. So if, if we're going to stay to throw, we're going out to throw now because it's not raining yet, I don't think. We'll get a good throw session in, and, and again, you know, hound us, use us as resources, and, under, and, and, and leave today with like, okay, these are my two to four technical things I've got to work on. This is what I want to do lifting-wise. This is what I want to do throwing-wise. This is what I want to do you know, school-wise, and, and, and go home and, and take, a, take a big step on holding yourself accountable to, to achieve that purpose that you set out to, to try and achieve.